Hello everyone, just a really quick recording for this particular one on how to import geometry into Star CCM Plus. So, I believe I mentioned this previously, but the geometry import is for things that you are too complex or um, have too many degrees of freedom to model within Star CCM Plus, which is going to be a lot of stuff, honestly. It's a lot easier to receive models from, um, like, within a company from other departments that, you know, here's the thing we want to simulate. Uh, you go into some other software, which depends on the company, and you clean it up. And then you pull that file into Star CCM Plus is usually how this works. Um, the exception can be if you really absolutely want to know everything about a specific scenario. It can make a lot of sense to model even very complex things in Star CCM Plus if you want to do a lot of variations with them. Um, but it really depends on your use case. Uh, in a lot of the case, in my experience, you wind up pulling things into Star CCM Plus from external software rather than modeling it within Star CCM. So to pull parts in, what you do is you go to File, File Import. Uh, and import a surface mesh. Uh, also, potentially import recent surface files will also work, depending if you imported it recently or not. Um, if you not like need to give it a couple of goes to get it just right before you import it, sometimes it'll be in the recent files. But import surface mesh. It'll pull up a window. It by default passed the program files, which I absolutely hate. Um, but you can go find your file. In this case, I believe um, where is this one hiding? Bertrand. I'm looking for Parasolid, but this is a little bit interesting. Um, let me just make sure I hit the right button here. Import, import surface mesh, yep. Oh, that's a space claim dot. Okay, that kind of explains it. Okay, let me try this again. Um, all importable files. And let me just browse around looking for this. This is just an example, so it really doesn't matter too much what exactly I import, but... Um, Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, but I was looking for a parasol text file, so it'll have this extension dot x under bar t. Um, this is a file I prepared for last semester. This is not the file that you have. It is an airfoil, but it is not the airfoil you are simulating. We're gonna go ahead and hit open. So it gives you some options. Usually, most of these are fine as default, with a couple of exceptions. Um, you generally want to uncheck merge parts by name. Uh, for any complex parts, you're going to want to create one part per, or sorry, one part surface per part. If you don't do that, you're going to wind up with a list potentially a mile long of different numbered surfaces for any significantly complex part. For an airfoil, not so bad. For anything more complex, very bad. Don't. Um, for any complex part, you definitely want to change the selection. Um, we haven't really talked about contacts. Usually, contacts, excuse me. 
leaving this one checked is usually fine. Um, we'll, we may touch on that later. That's a more advanced topic. Um, yeah, everything else really should be fine. The tessellation density medium is pretty good. If you feel like it's using too few triangles to make a thing, you can turn this up to fine or very fine, but medium is usually what you need. I mean, it's a parasolid file, so I think it brings it in with exactly as much resolution as the parasolid file has in the first place. So leaving the tessellation density alone is usually fine. If you want to look at what the geometry is, if you don't already have a geometry scene, you can leave this open geometry scene after import checked, and it'll open a new geometry scene with the parts that you have just imported. So I click OK, and we can see that it pops up with a window with our airfoil. Uh, this is not the same airfoil that you have. I believe this is like a five by one. You see here, I believe this is like a one meter cord. Oh no, it's a two meter cord. Um, ten meter span. Yeah, this is a two meter cord, ten meter span airfoil. Uh, NACA forty four twelve. Um, but here we have a part within star CCM plus that we've imported from exterior. We did not define this in star and we can do all the normal things to manipulate this. Like let's go ahead and split the surface by patch. Uh, so we have the left wing tip. We have the right wing tip. Great. We have the main surface of the wing. And we have the trailing edge. Oh, it won't let me create the trailing edge because it's the last part. So we're going to rename this trailing edge. There we go. So we have a whole bunch of surfaces on the swing, and we can manipulate this just like we normally would. So if we wanted to, say, cut this out of a block, uh, we would create a block. You can see what the ge geometric parameters of this block look like, but we know we want one side of this block to be probably like negative 10. Yeah, that would be five chords upstream. Um, also negative probably yeah, negative 20. This will be positive 20 and this will be positive like 40. Yeah, so this is 20 chords downstream, give or take. Um, 10 chords up, 10 chords down, five chords in front. Uh, it starts on it starts at Z equals zero. It proceeds to Z equals one. Create. So it's a little skinny block. Doesn't look like much. Um, but this is very important because this is what we need for a 2D simulation. So we're going to split this by patch again. We have an inlet in front. We have an outlet behind. Have a upper boundary. We also have a lower boundary. Lower. And one of these planes is on Z equals zero. And one is at Z equals one. So it's going to be the one, it's going to be this one because this plane is closer to z equals zero. Or, sorry, it's on z equals zero because of the two z values, one is zero, one is one, and this is the lower z value. So we know this is what I'm going to refer to as our plane 
that is our simulation plane, the plane on which we are simulating. Out of plane, OOP. Um, and then I'm going to stop just after the geometry prep, but we can do a Boolean subtract. We can subtract our airfoil from our block. So the block and our airfoil are involved. We are subtracting it from the block. Click OK. We pull up our subtract. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make a new geometry scene with only our subtract. We can see that there is a block with an airfoil shaped hole in it. Perfect. Um, surface, or sorry, mesh, badge for 2D meshing. We badge or subtract. Um, it ran that, no problem. And then we can do very briefly, and this is going to be an overly coarse mesh, a 2D mesh on our airfoil. Um, so a couple things that matter here. Um, the inlet, the lower, the outlet, the upper, all have far field controls. Surface size, custom, target surface size, custom. And uh, okay, I need to change the base size, but we'll, we'll get around to that. Um, New surface control, the trailing edge of our airfoil. Let's see here. Uh, um, I'm going to do some inline math here. So 12.5 divided by 4. So 1 fourth of 1 eighth. So 1 32nd of the base size. And this is probably going to be max size. It's going to be 1 quarter of the base size. New surface control. Um, this will give us a maximum base size everywhere. Let's call this a target size of... <clears throat> Uh, go with like uh, we'll go with sixteen hundred because that's the same as the other one actually. Um, and then last but not least, let's do a surface control, and you also could include volumetric controls just to catch the trailing edge here, um, and other stuff like that. Um, or to specifically refine the leading edge, you could use a volumetric control, put a cylinder there or something like that. Um, this will be a wake refinement. Here we probably want to extend, uh, yeah, five cords back from the airfoil in the positive X direction. Um, the spread angle is... Go with two degrees. The size, it doesn't need to be that small. We're going to make it 200. It's not going to get any smaller. It's actually going to grow a little bit, but it's, uh, it's definitely not going to get nearly as large as a lot of things. And the growth factor is probably fine. Oh, we also wanted to change our growth rate from our default to our user specified. We'll call it 5%. Um... I think this is probably okay, but we're going to want something more like, let's do five centimeters for our base size and see how much I overcooked this map. Oh, it needs to be assigned to a region. Um, assign parts to region, one region for each part, each part surface. Apply, close, execute. Let's see what this looks like.
Oh yeah, that's um. Well, this this mesh has some distinct problems, shall we say, in a number of ways. Um, but I'll leave that to you guys to figure out. I could sit here and tweak this and fiddle with this and make this look good. Um, but point is, that's how you import something and you can manipulate it just like any other geometry. We're going to go ahead and leave this here and I'll have another video up for you on some other topics shortly.